Okay. Well, I'm just going to get started on my finish, and uh, I'm going to start it out with a couple of coats of tongue oil. And uh, I've got her sanded down to uh, 600 grit now, so it's nice and smooth. And get my brush saturated here. And uh, Boy, I love tongue oil. Stuff is so pretty. Oh, I also uh, I also drilled a little hole right here, sort of at a at a slight angle, for my cord to come out. Uh, that way, I don't have to make a divot or something in the bottom, and uh, that get it off balance or something but uh anyway i'm gonna put a couple coats of tongue oil on there i'm done with all the sanding uh well i have to come back and uh very lightly sand with 600 grit between the tongue oil coats but i'm going to put two coats of tongue oil and then i'm going to come back with uh uh just a my finishing paste wax and uh, let me get some out of here. But it really, boy, that tongue oil just brings that color out so nice. And the good thing is it cures really quick. Uh, here in about 30 minutes I'll be able to come back and get some, uh, get the next coat on. I'm having trouble with these little cheap little brushes. It was wanting to come out of the thing. And then the sticks wanting to come out. <laughs> but I'm going to put this first coat on really thick. And uh, I mean it's running all over the place. And that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, it'll all end up soaking in. Every bit of it. So first coat don't even worry about. It. Just, just get it on there nice and thick. And uh, let it soak down into that wood and uh, bring out all them pretty colors. Alright, I'm about got this knocked out here. I'll have to get me another brush. This one is uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just wanting to pop off of there. Then uh, the next thing I'll do, I'll go ahead and I'll finish all my... I'll, I'll sand between two coats of tongue oil and then I'm just going to apply a finishing paste wax and uh, and I'll be back uh, once I get ready to put that on. Alright then. See y'all in a few minutes. Alright, I'm just getting ready to put on my first coat of wax. I've got two coats of tongue oil and uh, on here already and they're cured up. It's taking a couple of hours. But all I'm using is the uh, is a paste finishing wax from Men Wax, and you can you can get that just about anywhere. But the way I'm going to apply at least this first coat is I'm going to apply it by hand and try to rub it in real good. And uh, it takes a good bit the first uh, first coat, but I'll probably do two, maybe three coats. Well, we'll just see how it goes. And, uh, and just like the tongue oil, I put a good thick coat on the first time. And that will uh, ensure that I get it coated really, really well. And, uh, Just making little circles. Making sure I get the wax all over everything really good. I 
like I say, it takes a good bit to get this on there. The first coat, after that, after that, you just put really thin coats on and it just, it gets a little bit shinier and shinier as long as your surface prep is good. Like I say, I finished this to uh, 600. It, it should be a, a pretty nice finish. Not quite glossy, but uh, you know, just a, a nice finish. I'll let that kind of dry to a haze and then I'll come back and uh, and I'll, I'll just kind of buff it and take off the excess, let it cure up real good, and then I'll buff it out. And then I'll start and I'll put the second coat on. And, uh, and we'll see what it looks like then. All right. Well, I'll be back when I get ready to buff this thing. Okay. I'm just getting ready to take off this excess. And, uh, see how it does. Open, just knocking off the excess the first time. And you can feel it, it, it tries to pull your it tries to pull your paper towel away. Knocking off the excess. I'll come back and buff it in a couple of minutes when this it's about dried up now. It might buff out pretty nice. Once I get the excess off, I get a, a clean paper towel. Nice clean paper towel. And just, just kind of buff it. Could speed the ways up maybe, but I don't really, this piece is still out of balance a little bit. And that's mostly because the hardwood, one side of this is mostly hardwood and the other side it's got sapwood in it so it makes it lighter weight. Okay, all right. Well, two coats of tongue oil, one coat of wax. I'm going to go through that same process again with the uh, with the wax, and I may end up doing it a third time, but I'm just going to keep going until I get the finish that I want, and uh, I'll be back when I get ready to uh, finish the bottom. All right. Well, I'm sorry about your vantage point but uh, I can't get you back behind me or you won't be able to see anything at all there either. But what I gotta do now is uh, I just, I'm just gonna shape the bottom, true it up a little bit, make sure it's all concave really well. And uh, right here where my hole, I've got a hole right here that comes in from the side for my cord. I've gotta make sure I've got enough room to get the cord out right there. All right, well, I'm just gonna use my 3 inch ball gouge or my half inch ball gouge and try to, uh, hopefully I won't throw it out of here. I've got it mounted on my barracuda chuck because the uh, pen was small. Let's see what we got. Must be very, very careful. Take a while. To get this right. I'll go ahead and make sure this edge is pretty up. Alright. 
what I'm doing now is uh, I'm going to put this, uh, it's a closed cell foam, and I'm going to put it on the bottom. And uh, I'm just going to do that with some uh, spray adhesive. Make sure it's stuck up really good. I'm just going to spray this really well. Spray that. And then I'll just sit the lamp right on top. That'll give it a really good, really good soft bottom. And then I'll just come back and I'll trim it up. Alright. And I will have to rebuff this thing. Uh, because I've touched it with my fingers and all. It was kind of looks kind of off just a little bit. But it'll It'll shine up really nicely. And what I did also was I went ahead and I cut the tenon off the top. And uh, with my bandsaw, I just walked over to the bandsaw, cut the tenon off, and took it to my belt sander and sanded it. Then uh, I put a good heavy coat of thin CA over the whole thing. This is all in grain. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to seal that up really good. So I, uh, I did that, and then I came back with a couple of coats of, uh, of the wax. So that should be really good to go. As soon as this sets up, I'll trim that off, and then I'll, uh, then I'll start assembling this thing. All right. Well, I've got the, uh, the foot on the bottom. So now it's got... It'll sit, it won't slip as easily. Now I'm just going to try to get started uh, assembling this thing. Now the all thread, it comes with a bunch of nuts and bolts and washers and couplings and things like that, which is a good thing, but I don't believe I'm going to need them. And this all thread will go through here, I'm hoping, and I don't have to uh, we'll go let me grab the coupling there. There's a coupling right here. I'm gonna see if I can tighten that up. And I may have to uh, I may have to hammer this thing through. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I am. So I got my little mallet. sticking out but I believe that's going to be just about right I destroyed the little coupling but I don't need it anyway and as hard as I had to beat that I'm not going to put a, a bolt on the end of it but it did come it did come through just about the amount that I wanted it to but I'm not going to worry about putting the nut on the bottom of that probably not going to get it really tight anyway. Clean out the sawdust in there. Yeah, it said to use a 3 8 3 8 bolt. I mean a 3 8 hole and uh, that's what I used but buddy it was tight. Alright. 
Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I thought I thought I was recording. But uh, all I've done is I put my all thread in. I've got a nut on the bottom down here, and I put this nut up on the top and tighten it down. That's uh, that's your lock nut. First thing uh, you want to take care of that first off. Then this little piece goes in. It comes from the heart. It comes from this. Okay, it's the very bottom, the very bottom of that. Squeeze this together. Right, once that goes together, let's see. Then this goes on. Well, let me put my my cord through there first. Make make uh, life a lot easier for me. All right, the cord. Just took it out. It goes in the little hole down here. And I'll pull out plenty of slack to go up through the all thread. And it just goes straight up through the all thread. Feeds in and should come right out the top. There we go. That's probably about all I need. I'll pull a little bit of that slack back. Okay, now the harp. Harp mount, I mean. And then this. And it just screws on the tip right there. Now, I'm turn this sort of a little bit this way. I'm going to try to put the heart kind of at a right angle to the cord coming out the back. So the cord comes out right here. Got it about 90 degrees right there. Then you have this little set screw that goes in right here. And that just kind of locks everything in place. Uh, Alright, good. Now, now for the wiring. Uh, I, I just looked at the instructions and it doesn't it doesn't say one has got to go into a certain screw hole or not but you have two terminals one here and one here loosen those screws up and uh, you form a hook now the screws tighten clockwise this way so you want you want to Make your hook and go over it from this side and tighten it down so that it actually tries to pull the hook in rather than that. I've got to tie a little knot in here too. And all this knot will do is just keep it from it's just a little overhand knot and all it'll do is just keep it from wanting to slide through all right once you get both your wires hooked you pull your knot up to the bottom of the socket right there just Pull your knot all the way up to the bottom of the socket, and that'll help relieve the stresses. Pull your slack through, and figure out which direction you want. I'm going to turn the, this thing this way. And then I need this to go down over the top of that. And it snaps in place. 
sorry I ran out of data, but I had just snapped this on. Now, the only thing left to do is to install the harp. And all it does, you just squeeze it together and hook it in the bottom there and let it, and then let the little caps fall. And that'll, that'll hold the whole thing nice and tight. Now, there's a little nut on the top here, which you may not be able to see with the, see the little nut right up there. That's for your shade. You just, you just take this nut off and you slip your shade over the top. Well, whatever comes off. Put your shade down over the top and screw the nut back down. And uh, then you've got a lamp. Uh, well, I don't have a light bulb out here, but anyway, we'll see. All right, hold on a minute. All right, well, there's the end of uh, my aunt's lamp project. Big old piece of walnut. I love the look of walnut. And uh, I still need to go back and buff it just a little bit because uh, it wasn't completely cured and I still, I've got fingerprints and stuff on it, but I'll make some pictures of it in the house uh, once I get it, once that cures up good and I buff it some more. But uh, got a nice uh, uh, soft bottom on here. That and the uh, the stuff that I use for that, all it is is a uh, it's a closed cell craft foam. Is all it is. Uh, it comes in sheets like this. And uh, I bought this at Walmart. It it, it, it comes in. A, there's a lot of them. I don't know how many's in there, but there's a bunch of them. And I use them for everything. That's what I used on my vacuum chuck. It's closed cell foam, so. Uh, you know, it's watertight and everything like that. But that'll give a nice feel or a nice soft uh, setting for the lamp. But uh, anyway, these kits, uh, they're, they're easy. I mean, the instructions are right there. They come with all the parts. But you have to make sure you buy the lamp rod. Uh, I believe most of them, it comes separate. Uh, everywhere I've seen that sells the lamp kits, they sell the, the rods. The all three, they sell it separate. So, uh, you know, you'll have to you have to buy that separate. But uh, anyway, great project. Really, really enjoyed it. I think my aunt's really going to like her lamp. I hope she does anyway. She's been after me for a couple of years to make her one. And I kind of feel bad that it's taken me this long, but I'm glad I could share it with y'all. Uh, maybe you'll go make one yourself. But... Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to give a shout out to John Williams, my buddy down in Tampa. Uh, I received the uh, captive tool rest that he sent me today. I'm going to give it a try as soon as I get the post welded on. And uh, thank you, John. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, don't forget, you guys, that I challenged Daniel Lanier, Sean Huskins, and John Williams. Guys, don't forget, you've got the Ice Bucket Challenge. It's for, it's for a good cause, it's for ALS uh, awareness, and uh, or also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you can go to find out more about, uh, about this disease and how you can help or donate or uh, if you just want to do the ice bucket challenge. But you all have a good day and uh, we'll see you on down the road.